Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with another video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be showing you how to refinish rusty bolts with a black oxide coating. This is a chemical process that creates a satin black finish, which provides a form of rust protection. The coating is only resistant to moisture. Excessive exposure to moisture will eventually cause rust, so it's not applicable on all applications. This is great for any restoration, or if you're having to make new custom hardware as well. It's not just limited to fasteners either. For this, I'm using hardware from my lawn tractor's bagger attachment. One of the easier ways I find dealing with rusty bolts is soaking them in vinegar for a couple days. This will strip any coating, paint, and rust. Make sure the hardware is free of any grease or oil, which can create a barrier, not allowing the vinegar to do its job. This is just off the shelf white vinegar from a local grocery store. I believe you can use cleaning vinegar as well, which is slightly more acidic. Place the fasteners in a container, something which has a lid to reduce the chance of any evaporation. Make sure they are fully submerged, put the lid in place, and then store somewhere safe for a couple days. After 12 to 24 hours, you can shake up the container to help agitate the fasteners. They'll rub against each other, breaking up any corrosion. After 48 hours, here you can see the solution. The vinegar will change color as it breaks down any corrosion. Remove the fasteners and allow any residue to drip off the surface. They currently have a black oxidized finish. This will need to be removed. I will be providing three different finishing examples. The first one I'll be using a wire wheel. This is on a drill press. A bench grinder can also work too. If you're working with small parts, the wire wheel can grab the part and throw it, so keep that in mind. Items like nuts can be attached to the bolt, making it easier to hold on to. Just make sure it doesn't spin off the thread portion. You'll need to make sure the black coating is completely removed, along with any previous plating, paint, and even mill scale depending on the application. The jar in the background is filled with a wax and grease remover. The parts will soak in there for a few minutes to remove any oils on the surface which can cause issues in the black oxide coating. A fast evaporating solvent is needed, something which is strong enough to remove any oil and doesn't leave any residue behind. Acetone would be another option, it is stronger than a wax and grease remover. Just make sure your solvent jar is kept far enough away in case of any sparks. When using a wire wheel, also be careful around the threads as you can cause damage. As a second example, here I'm using an abrasive Scotch-Brite pad. Again, this is installed in the drill press. This is rated at a 400 grit finish. I have found it gives a slightly more matte finish than compared to the wire wheel, which seems to polish the surface. Wire wheels also have various grit ratings. Therefore, they will leave a different finish behind. And for a third example, this will be a media blaster. For this, I'm using glass bead to clean the part instead of vinegar. This will remove any rust, paint, and coating without removing any metal material. It leaves a very flat, uniform finish. An alternative to media blasting, which is cleaner and a much more efficient method, is using a tumbler. Here you can see the different finishes. These are all the same components, made of the same material. The wire wheel is the shiniest, and is the first one on the bottom. Next is immediate blasting. This has the flattest, almost porous-like finish. And finally is the abrasive pad, rated at 400 grit. This is slightly less polished than the wire wheel. After those fasteners have been soaking in the solvent, this will remove any contaminants, grease, or even just oil from your skin. Rubber gloves are a must here so the fasteners don't become contaminated. Otherwise, it will leave imperfections in the surface finish. Pliers can be used, but the jar opening wasn't large enough, so I magnetized a clean screwdriver instead to pull out the parts. Each part is wiped down and left on paper towel to have any of the remaining solvent evaporate. Here's a chemical used for the black oxide. I purchased it online. It comes in a concentrated form to be mixed with distilled water. Only use distilled water as it doesn't contain any additives which can cause issues. The solution is mixed anywhere from 4 to 1 to 9 to 1 water to chemical ratio. I ended up mixing this at about 4 parts water to 1 part chemical. Drop the parts in the solution. It can also be brushed on if you wish. They'll need to soak in there for about 5 to 10 minutes. Mix the solution every couple minutes to ensure everything is evenly coated. 
When working with this solution, make sure you are in a well-ventilated area. A mask is recommended, as well as rubber gloves. Once done, using a magnetic screwdriver, remove the fasteners from the solution and rinse in clean distilled water. Working between the distilled water and solution, there's no need to worry about any cross-contamination. Remove from the distilled water and dry off the parts with paper towel. Once dry, the coating needs to be protected from moisture. Oil will need to be applied. This will soak into the coating and provide a layer of protection. Here I have a jar of WD-40 which is thin enough to soak into the black oxide surface. Let it soak for about an hour or more. Using another magnetized screwdriver, remove the fasteners from the oil and place on a paper towel. Then dry any excessive amount of oil off. Now the parts are ready to be used. Depending on the surface cleaning method, this will affect the coating finish. I have found the media blasting leaves the blackest finish and seems to allow the most amount of oil to soak into the surface. The media blasted version is the first. The second is the abrasive pad. This seems to have the second best finish. And finally is the wire wheel which still has a good finish, but this would be my third choice in quality. Now you can see some of the other parts. This will not fill in any surface imperfections, you can still see the pitting left behind from the rust. The parts must be cleaned perfectly, both in removal of any surface material and cleaning any contaminants so you don't have any surface imperfections. This is a great way of cleaning up any old fasteners, applying a coating to a custom part, or even redoing some old tools. New videos released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button, it's a huge help to me and leave a comment below if you found this tutorial helpful. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to also hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.